weeks after the end of the Second World War. Homeless people wandered the roads of Germany. Survivors. Many were rounded up into camps. Many were soldiers. A British internment camp near Lüneburg. Relief on people's faces. The nightmare is over. They've survived. On May the 23rd, 1945, one of those hot spring days, a thin, sickly man with a patch over one eye and a torn uniform entered the camp commander's office. One of the millions who had lost the war. The man removed his eye patch and gave his name in a weary voice. Heinrich Himmler. Reichsführer of the SS, chief of police with its murder squads, and the Gestapo. He created the super army, the Waffen SS, whose soldiers sought death on all fronts. Minister of the Interior. He saw to it that things were kept quiet in the Reich. He had people killed behind the front lines. Thanks to his secret service, he knew everything about everyone. He bred the racially pure Germans. He had millions of people shot, tortured to death, sent to the gas chambers. A thin, sickly man. Himmler came from a background that appeared decent. Catholic, educated, civilized, Bavarian. No other Nazi biography so calls into question the merits of Germany's humanistic education. The man most deeply involved in all the atrocities did not come from the proletarian underworld, nor from a small town in Austria, nor from the grey army of the uprooted and unemployed, the impoverished, those mentally or physically scarred by the Great War. His school in Landshut, a humanistic grammar school with a good reputation. The writer Ludwig Thoma went to school here. The poet Hans Karosser studied here before Himmler and the German president Roman Herzog after him. Himmler's father was deputy principal the very model of a good teacher of the old school. Very German, very pedantic, very moral, but friendly and highly educated. Certainly not an anti-Semite. He did everything he could to educate his son as well as he taught his son's godfather, Prince Heinrich of Bavaria. What else, if not an education, should protect one from the dark abyss of the soul into which his son would plunge, taking countless others with him? A school outing in 1913. In the middle sits the schoolboy Heinrich Himmler. When war broke out, he was full of enthusiasm. No different from many boys his age. A scornful diary entry about the burghers of Landshut shows the characteristics of the future Reichsführer of the SS. Die ängstlichen Landshuter Spießbürger lassen jetzt den Kopf hängen, streuen furchtbare Gerüchte aus, fürchten von den Kosaken grausam maschakiert zu werden. Überhaupt ist in Niederbayern bei den Zurückgebliebenen keine besonders große Begeisterung. Bei Bekanntgebung der Mobilmachen soll in der Altstadt alles geflennt haben. Ich hätte mir das von den Niederbayern am allerwenigsten gedacht, wo die Niederbayern sonst doch so rauflustig sind. He desperately wanted to become an officer and go to war, but he was too young. He was not allowed to leave school until June 1917. As a cadet officer, he signed a letter to his parents, Miles Heinrich, Heinrich the soldier. The start of a lifelong lie. Unlike his later Führer, Adolf Hitler, Himmler was never a soldier and the war was over before he had finished his training. 
He always yearned for war without knowing what it was like at the front. With romantic ideals of battle and German civilization in his knapsack, he marched into a world rocked by the horrors of an industrialized war. With its bombs and gas attacks, the world was sliding helplessly into the modern age. November the 9th, 1923, Munich. Himmler, bearing the Reich battle flag, takes part in Hitler's failed putsch. A follower of Captain Röhm, he joined the NSDAP, the National Socialist German Workers' Party. He had found his spiritual home. Essen, 1926. Heinrich Himmler's first appearance in film footage. He was deputy leader of a small section of the SA, the Schutzstaffel, or elite guard, soon to be known as the SS. No one suspected what it would one day become, or that the young man in Lederhosen at its head would rise to be Hitler's most powerful subordinate. Nuremberg, 1927. Hitler on the soapbox. Behind him, SA chief Pfeffer and Heinrich Himmler. He had only met Hitler a year before, a charismatic leader who could fill the gap left when Himmler's mentor, Röhm, had emigrated to Bolivia. Himmler was to become the man who made loyalty to Hitler the highest virtue. 1929, Hitler, Pfeffer, Göring. Himmler had risen from deputy to be Reich leader of the SS. At the head of his small troop of 280 men, he paraded before those who held power in the party. The same year in Berlin, Himmler had stepped up. He no longer marched, he helped to review the parade, but he still stood on the sidelines. Himmler's insignificance in 1929, even as Reich leader of the SS, is evident in this promotional film about the SA. Chief of Staff Pfeffer with his staff in attendance. Heinrich Himmler appears among the also-rans without even being named. He merely presents a document. Himmler had actually ganz schüchtern gewirkt. Gar nicht selbstsicher oder, oder, oder militärisch oder, oder gar brutal. Er hat eben eher so das Auftreten eines etwas scheuen, ja, bürgerlichen Mannes gehabt. Himmler was so inconspicuous that no one noticed his career moves. He quietly wormed his way to the center of power. His inconspicuousness itself worked to his advantage. He adopted a slogan from the Prussians. Later, he had it engraved on daggers. Sein 1942, the funeral service in the Reich Chancellery for Reinhard Heydrich, assassinated by the Czech resistance. Without Heydrich, Himmler might always have stayed on the sidelines. Reinhard Heydrich, the young evil god of death, the most dangerous man in Germany, as he was called in Britain. He was a daredevil. He desperately wanted the Iron Cross and flew in combat until he was finally given it. He created the SD, the security service within the SS. Thanks to him, Himmler became the man who knew everything about everybody. Ha, 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 Fat Goering once joked. Himmler's got a brain. It's called Heydrich. By 1942, he had long stopped making jokes about Himmler. The non-entity had overtaken Goering in the struggle for power under Hitler. Together, Heydrich and Himmler managed to take the Gestapo from Goering. 
The Gestapo was the traitor's reward given to Himmler for betraying the man Goering regarded as his real opponent, SA chief Röhm. Ernst Röhm was Hitler's friend, and Heinrich Himmler had come into the party through Röhm. Röhm had emigrated to Bolivia, but Hitler called him back. He couldn't get the upper hand in the SA and made Röhm its chief of staff, commander of an army of three million men. Röhm's growing power was a thorn in the side of the leadership of the army, the Reichswehr. Army Minister Blomberg gave Hitler a choice. Either the army remained the only armed force, or it would cease to support Hitler. Blomberg had the trust of the dying President Hindenburg. He could have stripped Hitler of his power. Rome, however, liked to be center stage as the popular hero. Nobody, not even Hitler, could mobilize such huge armies. Rome made the SA brown shirts a people's army in which they spoke of permanent revolution. He wanted to become the military leader of Germany, and perhaps a lot more besides. The pictures prove it. Rome received more acclaim than anyone except Hitler. Not only from the SA, the people also appeared to be behind him. He was a serious threat, even to Hitler himself. Under Stalin, Rome would have been long dead. But Hitler's strategy was to talk the SA out of their desire for arms. The leaders of the Reichswehr just listened. SA, Kameraden. Kameraden SS und Hitlerjugend. Wenn das Heer der Waffenträger der Nation ist, dann müsst ihr sein, der Willensträger, der politisch gestaltende Willensträger der deutschen Nation. So wie ich kein anderes Ziel sehen will, als Deutschland wieder groß, stark und frei zu machen, so muss euer Ziel sich mit dem verbinden, was euer Wille mit dem Mann geschadet hat. Himmler's SS was still part of the SA, making Rome Himmler's superior. But the SS had sworn allegiance to Hitler, not Rome. If Himmler wanted to continue his rise to power, he had to get out from Rome's shadow. He concocted a conspiracy. On Himmler's orders, Heydrich forged documents showing Rome had planned a coup against Hitler. Hitler believed him, or pretended to. With the help of the SS, the SA was stripped of power at the end of June 1934. In the night of the long knives, Röhm and many others were murdered. Now the Black Order, as the SS was also known, began to flourish. At its head, Himmler. No one now stood between him and his Führer. The Abbey Church at Quedlingburg. Here Heinrich Himmler wrote history, or rewrote it. Dieses einstmalige Grab, auf dem seit Jahrtausenden von Menschen unseres Blutes bewohnten Burgberg von Quedlingburg, mit dem wunderbaren, aus sicherem germanischen Gefühl heraus geschaffenen Gotteshalle, soll eine Weihestätte sein, zu der wir Deutschen Wald waren. Summer 1936. 1,000 years after the death of the German King Heinrich I, the SS took possession of the Church of Quedlingburg. Here, as the Reich leader amongst his men, Himmler dropped the disguise of the zealous servant. Here, he was Grand Master of the ultimate German order. Here, with his chosen ancestor Heinrich on his side, he could contemplate the daring plans for which he lacked the courage in Hitler's presence. They turned German history 
into the prehistory of National Socialism. The past had been brought into line with Nazi dogma, but what vision for the future could Himmler offer his accomplices? The truth of it all was war. Himmler's death seekers in action. For them, there was no paradise on earth and no paradise on the other side. They believed only in the fight for its own sake. In 1939, after the invasion of Poland, Hitler went to the front. As the German army advanced, Himmler's sinister power settled over the vanquished Europe. A visit to the SS bodyguard regiment, named after Adolf Hitler and under the command of Sepp Dietrich. Hitler's super soldiers, proudly presented by his loyal Heinrich. Metz. The Waffen SS wanted to be a military elite, but war crimes were committed from among its ranks too. The veterans are still wrestling with this today. Wir sagten, wir, wir waren ausgezeichnete Soldaten mit allem Schwung und weiß ich alles was, mit gutem Material und so weiter und so weiter. Und dann, dann wird in derselben Firma sozusagen SS kommt dann diese Die Gestapo und das ganze Gesocks, damit hatten wir nichts zu tun. Dieses SD-Kommando wollte sich bei der Truppe, bei den Offizieren und bei den Mannschaften anbietern. Aber für uns waren diese Leute unehrliche Leute, wie im Mittelalter die Henker. Es war, war keinerlei Verbindung und Beziehung, die wurden verachtet und geächtet. For all his pride in the Waffen SS. Himmler was no soldier, he was a policeman. The SD, the Gestapo, the special killing squads known as Einsatzgruppen, they were Himmler's world. His war was waged against the defenseless. Under German supervision, a Polish policeman gives a young man the yellow star of David. It doesn't seem to mean much yet, but it's a death sentence. The genocide started quietly. A Czech policeman guarding a Jewish settlement. In Eastern Europe, Jewish quarters, the shtetl and the ghetto were nothing new. But now they became prisons. At Theresienstadt, the whole town was turned into a concentration camp. These people building their own prison did not know what was in store for them at the end. They'd been announced as camps to reform anti-social elements. Himmler, Heydrich, the architects at the Berghof, Hitler's chalet on the Obersalzberg. They knew how to make their concentration camps sound harmless. Also ich habe ein einziges Mal erlebt, dass Hitler bei Tisch das Gespräch auf Himmler und auf Konzentrationslager gebracht hat. Aber das war ganz typisch, das war dann so, dass der Eindruck entstehen musste, das sind Arbeitslager. Und da hat Hitler erwähnt, dass Himmler da ganz raffiniert das System äh, anwendet. Er hat zum Beispiel dann einen notorischen Brandstifter mit der Verantwortung für die, für die Brandwache beauftragt. Und natürlich hat der Himmler gesagt, da können Sie sicher sein, mein Führer, da wird kein Brand ausbrechen. So, man hat so das Gehül gehabt, das ist ein wohl organisiertes, äh, psychologisch geschickt geführtes Arbeitslager. So war das damals. Und äh, 
das war das einzige Mal, dass ich überhaupt Konzentrationslager erwähnt gehört habe und auch eigentlich das einzige Mal, dass Hitler über Himmler gesprochen hat. Und da war Schwang so eine Art Achtung und Bewunderung mit für seine organisatorische Talente. Himmler basked in the Führer's favor and continued to construct his sinister world. His black order was a secret state within the state. Now he wanted it to have a capital. The SS bought Wevelsburg Castle in Westphalia and converted it into a center for their cult. They modeled it on the castle from the legend of Parsifal, Montsalvat, which had housed the Holy Grail, the object of the Knight's Quest. Himmler's Montsalvat was also meant to be a grail, a home for the spirits of the fallen SS knights. The village had to go sooner or later. Himmler's capital could not have a village next to it. The construction work on the castle was carried out, surprise, surprise, by prisoners. The sign reads, we owe our work here to the Führer. The little village of Wevelsburg got its own concentration camp, one of the hundreds in Himmler's Gulag. It was not an extermination camp, and yet most of the people who came here had to die. Die SS-Bauleitung war daran interessiert, dass die Häuser für die SS-Familien, die dann gebaut wurden, Siedlungen, dass die fertig wurden, während in das Lager als solches auf Vernichtung ausgerichtet war. Die Statistik von 43 war 63,7 Prozent Tote und davon 21 Glaubensbrüder von uns. Max Holweg belongs to the Jehovah's Witnesses, known then as Bible Students International. Like Jews, Gypsies and Homosexuals, Jehovah's Witnesses were persecuted by the Nazis. Holweg spent seven years in concentration camps, including Wevelsburg. Out of necessity and compassion, he took up natural healing. A uh, misshandled Häftling, a asozialer with a white winkel, he had a Flechmone. A Flechmone is a Eiterung des Gewebes unter in der durchblutenden Haut. Jeden Abend, wenn ich ihn verbinden musste, dazu haben wir von Hemden Streifen abgerissen und haben die Wunden zugebunden. Aber jeden Abend musste ich mit einem Holzspachtel die Würmer aus der Wunde, eine Handvoll Würmer, jeden Abend rausholen, bis dann die Würmer bis zum Rückgrat den ganzen Oberschenkel aufgefressen hatten, dann ist der Mann verschieden. That's what it was really like in Himmler's concentration camps. This was in the middle of Germany, in a village near Paderborn. The Holocaust was going on somewhere else. Himmler at a closed meeting. The villa at Grossenwanse in Berlin a meeting in early 1942. With Heydrich in the chair, it took them just one and a half hours to decide how the Jews of Europe might best be killed. The final solution was adopted, but the slaughter had to be cleaner, neater, quieter, and more efficient. 
It was not clear at this point just how many millions of people would have to be exterminated. Ministries and state offices had to be notified of the new measures. The words murder or gas chamber were never used. Anyone who didn't want to know what happened at the end of the deportations didn't need to know. Murder by car exhaust. The insecticide Zyklon B, the poison used in the gas chambers. In the camps, doctors became murderers, only instead of murder, it was called selection. Many doctors thought selection was an act of mercy. Mit den Selektionen, uh, ich meine, werden die Menschen zu Tode gebracht, aber gesterben würden sie ja sowieso. Und auf dieser Weise, mit der Selektion, sterben sie in einer humaneren Weise, als wenn man sie verrecken lässt. Und wer mal gesehen hat, wie das passiert, wenn einer verhungert vor einem vollen Topf, denn den hatten sie ja, diese, diese Lagersuppen, nicht wahr, die, äh, wo man sich ja den Bauch schlagen konnte davon. Und, 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 und ein Brot war auch dabei. Also kalorisch hätten sie nicht unbedingt sterben müssen. Sie hätten doch leben können. Aber sie waren absolut, sie waren, denn zu, der Fachausdruck war, sie waren Muselmänner. Sie waren am Körper abgemagert, extrem, hatten Wasserfüße, Wasser im, im Gesicht, ich war eine richtige, äh, also eine Wassersucht aus Eiweißmangel. The Holocaust was supposed to happen in a cool, orderly way. But it couldn't be kept tidy and ran wild. Pitiless killing was a duty. It meant being strong. Russia, an SS man, separates mother and child. Auschwitz, the children used in Dr. Mengele's experiments. Some of the few survivors. One child who lived through Auschwitz. Man hat mir Gift gespritzt. Bis heute weiß ich nicht was. Als Ergebnis der Experimente bin ich zu zwei Drittel behindert. Mein Körper zittert. Ich bekomme epileptische Anfälle. Was für ein Leben. The SS doctor's experiments on humans were conducted with what passed for scientific detachment and with the permission of Himmler. He knew how to justify them. If I carry out high altitude trials on Russian prisoners of war, I may save the lives of German pilots. A speech to a closed meeting. Wir werden niemals roh sein und herzlos, wo es nicht sein muss. Das ist gar Wir Deutschen, die wir als Einzige auf der Welt zum Tier eine anständige Einstellung haben, werden zu diesen Menschentieren ja auch eine anständige Einstellung haben. That was a lie too. What, apart from a pleasure in human suffering, could explain the use of human body parts in homely, everyday objects? Someone who used to play at Himmler's house as a child. Da war also ein, 
ein Raum, ein relativ kleiner Unterdachraum eingerichtet, aus, mit, sagen wir mal, mit Baumaterialien oder mit Möbeln, die aus menschlichen äh, Rohstoffen hergestellt waren. Ein Tischchen mit Oberschenkelknochen offenbar, oder ja, Oberschenkelknochen wohl als Tischbeinen, so ein dreibeiniger Tisch, meine ich, war das so ein Tischchen. Ein, äh, eine Art äh, Sitzmöbel, meine ich, aus einem menschlichen Becken, auch wieder kombiniert mit solchen Knochen. Eine Lampe, ein Lampenschirm aus Menschenhaut und ein handgeschriebenes, großes Exemplar von Adolf Hitler, mein Kampf. Und da wurde uns die Auskunft gegeben, nicht, das sei Menschenhäute, Rückenhaut. Hungary, Autumn 1944. These Jews, some of the last to be transported to Auschwitz, did not know what was in store for them. Himmler's mastery of secrecy was not perfect, but it was good enough to keep his victims in ignorance. And no one who knew of the mass murders had the strength to put a stop to them. The horror did not come until after the war, when the crimes had stopped. By the beginning of 1945, the war was lost. Himmler was finally able to realize his childhood dream. He became a soldier, even the senior commanding officer of the Weichsel Army Group. While the SS fought its last battles, the overtaxed Himmler admitted himself to the Hohenlüchen Sanatorium just outside Berlin. Here, he tried to cure himself of his real and imaginary diseases. A Wehrmacht general took over his command. He knew deep inside that nothing could be saved, but he still drove on to sacrifice those who didn't know. The last reserves of a defeated nation. Now all those who had been previously spared were called to arms. The cult of Armageddon. And Himmler himself? He was in Hohenlüchen, trying to find a solution. His chief of espionage, Schellenberg, urged him to strip Hitler of his power and offer to surrender to the West. Strip Hitler of his power? He didn't dare. But he did secretly meet an emissary from the free world, Count Volker Bernadotte of the Swedish Red Cross. Das erste Mal, dass ich Himmler getroffen habe, das war in einem Sanatorium Hohenlüchen, nicht weit von Berlin, das war ein 15. Februar 1945. Himmler had deserted. His meeting with Bernadotte in this villa was high treason. Loyal Heinrich had broken off his allegiance to the man he idolized. Just as he had betrayed and murdered his mentor Röhm in 1934, he turned, albeit fearfully and suffering from convulsions, against Hitler. On April the 20th, 1945, the most powerful men of the Reich gathered for a celebration in the Führer's bunker under the Reich Chancellery, Hitler's last birthday. Himmler was there too. From there, he fled. He set out for the estate of his masseur, Felix Kersten, in the north of Berlin. There, at the dead of night, Himmler met a delegate of the World Jewish Congress. Kersten had brought in the negotiator, Norbert Massur, from Sweden. His goal? To save as many Jewish prisoners as possible from the maelstrom into which Himmler's concentration camps were now descending. What did Himmler expect from this meeting? He told his masseur he wanted to bury the hatchet with the Jews. It was as if Himmler didn't realize who he was as if he'd forgotten what he'd just done. 
as if one could simply bury the hatchet after a holocaust. Himmler thought the world would accept him of all people as a partner in negotiations. The meeting was a failure. According to Kersten, Himmler left in tears. Bernadotte was waiting for him in Hohenlüchen. Himmler proposed peace with the West, but continued warfare against the Soviets. Er wollte, äh, sagen wir, auf der Stelle kehrt machen und vor den Amerikanern hergehen, die nicht mehr schießen sollten. Die Westalliierten sollten, also, hätten folgen können, aber sie selbst wollten den Kampf gegen Russland alleine durchführen. Bernadotte passed on Himmler's offer to surrender. The Allies did not reply. Instead, there was an announcement on the enemy radio. Himmler of all people. Betrayal is part and parcel of ruin. Und als furchtbarste Enttäuschung bezeichnete er aus seiner Sicht den Verrat Himmlers an ihm und meinte dann dazu, dass die Jugend gehalten habe, was Himmler ihm versprochen hatte. Pictures from better days. Axmann and Himmler recruiting adolescent cannon fodder. Countless Hitler youths died a futile death in the so-called final battle. Himmler's last abode, Kalkhorst Castle near Travemünde. Here he heard about Hitler's death and his own fall from power. Before his suicide, Hitler had stripped Himmler of all his offices. Himmler talked about creating an SS state in Schleswig-Holstein. But who was listening to him? History had overtaken him. His power was gone. His negotiations with Bernadotte failed. But the negotiations did save the lives of many of his victims at the 11th hour. The war was not yet over. As his price for entering negotiations, Bernadotte had obtained from Himmler the release of about 15,000 prisoners, most of them Scandinavians. The liberated prisoners passed through the war zone. Hundreds of thousands of other prisoners still lost their lives in the last days of the war. North Germany was in British hands. Yet Himmler still offered his services to Hitler's successor, Dönitz. But no one wanted him anymore. On May the 12th, Himmler crossed the Elbe near the little harbor of Neuhaus. Under a false name, with a patch over one eye, his mustache shaved off in a tattered uniform, accompanied by a few men, a pitiful bunch. They fled further on foot, mingling with countless other defeated German soldiers. Peace came. For Himmler, the end. Himmler's band was finally picked up by a small British patrol near Bremerförde and put in Camp Baunstedt near Lüneburg. It was packed with prisoners of war. Somewhere among these men is Heinrich Himmler, still unrecognized. On May the 23rd, he revealed his true identity. The following day, Himmler's adjutants, Grotmann and Macher, his last two faithful companions were filmed. They didn't know their boss was already dead. Souvenir snap. 
British soldiers drink to the death of Heinrich Himmler. One of them tells the story. And I've brought him to the microphone to tell you what happened. Sergeant Major Austin. Before I arrived, I didn't know it was Himmler. I was only told there was uh, an important prisoner whom I was to guard. As he came into the room, not the arrogant figure which we all know, but dressed in an army shirt, a pair of underpants, with a blanket wrapped round him, I immediately recognized him as Himmler. Speaking to him in German, and pointing to an empty couch, I said, that's your bed, get undressed. He looked at me and then looked at an interpreter and said, he doesn't know who I am. I said, yes, I do, you're Himmler, but still, that's your bed, get undressed. He tried to stare me out, but I stared at him back and eventually he dropped his eyes and sat down on the bed and started to take off his underpants. The doctor and the colonel then came into the room and started to carry out a routine inspection, uh, looking for poison, which we suspected he probably had on him. He looked between his toes, all over his body, under his armpits, in his ears, behind his ears, in his hair, and then he came to his mouth. He asked Himmler to open his mouth. He did, and he ran his tongue around his lips quite easily, but the doctor wasn't satisfied. He asked him to come nearer to the light. He came nearer to the light and opened his mouth. The doctor tried to put two fingers into his mouth to have, have a good look inside, I suspected, and uh, uh, Himmler drew his head away and, clamping down on the doctor's fingers, crushed the file of poison which he had been carried in his mouth for hours. The doctor said he's done it. He died. And when he died, we threw a blanket over him and left him.